afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar, GCSE Computer Science Revision Hacks, brought to you by uh, the fantastic Simon Howe, who's going to be uh, delivering this today. I'm Carol. I'm the CARS Outreach Manager for the North West. Um, I'm going to be your host. Obviously, this is part of the names in the attendees. You've already attended some. So we've got two weeks of these different webinars for you to take advantage of. Just a bit of housekeeping. You're in listen only mode. On the right hand side, you'll see a little orange arrow which you can expand or collapse to make your screen um, show Simon's presentation maybe a bit clearer. You have a question pod that's available. I'll come back to that in a moment. And also there is a handout pod. There's nothing in there at the moment for Simon's, but what he has done is dropped in a, a hyperlink under the chat window that hopefully you can access. I'll double check that later. There will be um, a copy of the webinar notes available, which I can upload shortly. And if you're using social media, the hashtag casvirtual20, get some pictures in there, share this so we can spread the good news. Just a point about the questions. Simon has got so much to share with you. We're going to go through Simon's presentation. Feel free to pop questions in the box, but we will be addressing those towards the end of the session so that we can make use of the full um, 40 minutes for Simon to share his materials with you. So with that, I'm going to hand over to Simon, who's going to take you through today's session. And you're very welcome. Enjoy. Uh, computer science revision hacks. Thanks, Simon. Hi, you're right, everybody. Sorry, I'm just looking at myself with my um, random haircut. I was, just, I was just saying to Carol before I managed to book in, so it should be good when I uh, get rid of this absolute mop. But anyway, hopefully everybody's um, surviving um, this time. I know it's been a bit of a challenge for us teachers, um, but obviously we've got uh, summer approaching, which hopefully will be a bit nice. So obviously today I'm just going to talk you through um, my sort of journey and my sort of tips. Hopefully I won't be teaching you to suck eggs for most of it and you, you'll at least get one or two good ideas from the, the presentation. Uh, and like Carol said, all the resources I talk through now, I've actually given you as a uh, editable version so you can change them uh, how you wish. Um, so firstly, just a bit of background about myself. So I'm uh, head of IT um, at Ashton Merging Sale. Uh, which is in Manchester. Um, so I work for the Dean Trust, which is a, 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 it's got 10 schools across the Northwest. I also am a CS champion for the NCCE. Um, and yeah, just posting quite a bit of resources at the minute. I've got a uh, Twitter there, which is at HowToComputing. Um, so if you feel free to tweet me there as well. I mean, in terms of my journey for computer science, I um, started in 2014. And my results were pretty horrific the first time we went through. Um, and you know, I'm talking down at sort of 20, 22%, I think. And last year we've sort of increased um, to 70 odd percent for nine to four, 58% um, nine to, to five, and around 30% seven to nine. So you know, we've increased quite a lot, you know, on the sort of journey. And some of the stuff I'll share with you today hopefully will help you support your students. Um, so yeah, let's get started. I did have a nice clip of the in-betweeners, but for some reason my uh, internet is blocking it because I'm using a school laptop. So when the presentation comes around, you can play it, you know, just to show student stress with um, revision. So unfortunately, we're going to miss that one off. So really the first thing, and, and you know, I'm sure you're all uh, aware of the sort of buzzwords in education, you know, in terms of this, which we're just going to give you a bit of context to um, revision. So it's the idea of sort of metacognition, cumulative testing, and this sort of retrieval and interleavering practices. And it's the same with sort of revision. And, and revision should be seen as something that is done throughout the whole of your um, program from year 10 all the way to year um, to year 11 not just a, a chunk at the end I mean, obviously the chunk at the end is going to be a lot more in depth but we should be revising throughout and it's really making pupils aware of the way they learn and what's best for them and sort of changing your resources up so you have lots of variety in there to, to support them um, cumulative testing you know is something key which we which are using in our school in, in my um, teaching all the time which is that 
constant testing, you know, little and often. Uh, and then retrieval practices. So this idea of, of posting a question which we learned last week, then a question we learned a month ago, and then maybe a question from a year ago. So we constantly trying to build those um, that metacognition and the, you know that the idea of building their knowledge. Uh, and low stakes quizzes as well is a really key part of this again to to slide into your to your lessons. So. I'm going to talk you through uh, nine different activities today. So this is the first one, um, which is called Crack the Code. I actually uh, built myself a little box um, and got these little, um, you can see these, you can grab these off Amazon, they're quite cheap, little locks, and you can change the combinations all the time yourself. Um, and then what I've done is a little couple of challenge sheets, which you can see here, and the pupils need to answer the questions to get the code, um, they're allowed two chances to come up and try and crack the code and open a box and get some sweets out or whatever you want to put in the box. Um, so they answer the questions, come up, crack the code and get whatever they need out. It works really well just to mix it up, you know, not too often, maybe do it sort of three, three to five times a year. Um, but again, really engages the pupils, supports that sort of revision and that retrieval. Um, so yeah, so it's quite a nice little activity just to mix up what you do in the room. The next thing which works incredibly well is this idea of um, cram sheets and questions by topics. This a lot of pupils really like this idea. So I'm sure you all all got it. But the idea of a cram sheet is I try, I really try and put the whole course. So if it's say paper one onto one side of uh, A3, I've not been able to condense it down to A4 yet. But one side of A3 has everything on it, the whole lot. So it's more or less for those pupils who are that sort of. Uh, three, four borderline, you say, look, all I need you to do is go and read this sheet, that's it. And then to support that, um, the idea of, so I've got all the exam papers and I broke it down um, to, a, to a presentation on each um, topic area. So if a pupil thinks, oh, I'm not particularly great at networking, instead of trawling through exam papers, they just go to my presentation with a, a exam questions on networking, all the questions are there, and there's a mirror presentation with all the answers. So slide one mirrors um, on the questions, mirrors slide one on the answers. So it's really quick for them to do some really um, useful questions based so they can read the cram sheet, go, oh, well, what's going on here, and then switch over um, to that. And that works really well um, in, the, in the classroom. It is a bit time consuming, but once it's done, it's done. And then each year, it's quite easy just to add the new exam papers to it. Um, past papers in examiners reports, I've been using these certainly last year quite a bit. Um, and what I tend to do now, I mean, obviously this year we, we couldn't have done it, but I tend to get the pupils to sign that they are okay for me. Because if you, most exam boards now, uh, Edexcel certainly, I think AQA do it as well, where you can actually access the, uh, their papers direct. You don't have to send off for anything anymore. So if so long as the pupils sign something saying you can access the paper, you can access it. So after they've sat the exam, I get all the pupils to sign it. And then what I can do is after the results have come out, I can actually go in and just pull their papers off. And um, their papers actually have the marks on per question. So then I can give it to, to pupils and get them to mark it. The same with the examiner's report. If you've not got that, these example questions there. And the pupils really find that e useful marking the questions to see where the marks lie. Um, you know, and again, that's quite a nice activity to go, you know, regularly sort of once a month with it within a lesson and then on the back of that you set them a question which is similar to what they've marked and hopefully they they would uh, have better understanding uh online quiz sites work really well such as uh, i'm sure most of us have used Kahoot, the uh, eddy stuff so ncc have done loads of pre-done questions for you there go conquer works really well uh, because of the variety of questions you can put on there i was going to do a live at quiz wizard but i found out because we've got so many people here because i use the free version um you can only have 25 people on it it's a really good one so it's, it's a good alternative to kahoot just to keep things mixed up uh quizlet quiz beam and then obviously google forms um so you can check this out in your own time unfortunately i don't think we're going to be able to to do it live um today so you know m using these online quiz sites really to just that low stakes quizzing and to support with retrieval and just basic knowledge is really good but it's really important i find to mix it up so don't do the same one all the time you know look for different ones and have that bit of variety in there just to keep pupils interest 
Uh, flashcards work really well on this site here. If anyone's used CRAM before, I would recommend it um, because what it does is you can put your flashcards on, so your keyword and your definition, and it actually creates um, two games, and the pupils really love that, that um, the um, Stella Speller, which is like an asteroids game where they have to shoot the asteroids to spell out the keyword. So at the top, it says the definition, and they have to then spell out the keyword um, by shooting it. So they have to understand what the definition means to identify the keyword and then shoot it um, and they get points for it. And it, it becomes quite a good little classroom activity, uh, again, just to, to embed that sort of knowledge um, throughout. Uh, next one is this uh, keyword Scrabble. So it's a Scrabble board. This Scrabble board is on my resources, so you've got it. It's uh, in A3, uh, so it's nice and big. I print them and I laminate them so I can reuse them because you can just use um, marker pens with them. So then the idea is I say to, to the pupils either a topic or if it's towards the end, it's everything to do with computing. So I might say uh, we're going to look at uh, uh, computer networks so then all the keywords have to be related to computer networks and it's the same principle as um, Scrabble so the first person has to put a word in which starts through this gray square in the middle and then the next pupil has to then obviously put another keyword in using one of the, the letters from the first one and so on and it builds and they get a point for every square and these other colored squares which I know is not particularly clear but it's like double letter treble letter and then around the outside there's some um, treble and double words so again it's a really um, useful tool and then to take it to the next level as well a lot of the time they can't put the word down uh, without being able to explain it and define it to, to the people in the group. So if they want to put a word down, so they might know what it is, if they can't justify it to the, the people in the group, they can't have that word. So they have to be really sure that um, what they're putting down, they, they understand. Um, and again, this usually, usually plan on doing this for five or 10 minutes, but it generally takes, because the people are so engaged with it, 25, 30 minutes sometimes it goes on in, into the room, but there is some really good learning and good retrieval activities going on. Um, as part of this this presentation really i'm sure everyone uses knowledge organizers as well but again something which really supports my pupils i tend i know some people have these filled but i tend to leave all mine blank and i leave um more or less like a question sheet so then what the pupils come in it's like a scaffolding is it's scaffolding their revision notes really so then they'll they'll use the sheet after particular topics and then they will um, complete them with their, their own knowledge using what they've done in, in books or done online or or the revision guide to give them so they have lots of different um, support material really to support them and then they complete this and, and again these knowledge organizers aren't just done once you know we do them maybe two or three times uh, each time reducing the amount of material they can look at so hopefully by the last time they can more or less fill one of these in without actually having to look at the books or the revision guides or anything like that so again it's that idea of repetition them understanding what it is uh, and using that to, to support them in their revision throughout this uh, the, the two, two year course of the GCSE um, the other one is these question mats, and again, I put these on there. Um, so the idea behind them is one of the pupils becomes the quiz master. They get the answers, which is the one at the top, and then the one at the bottom here is the question sheet. So that gets put down on the table. Now the pupils, what happens is at this point is they then pick the squares. Now they're differentiated, and I've tried when I've created them is to to do it as different grades. So then the grades represent. Um, different um, marks and things like that. So the weaker pupils can still engage with it because obviously the red squares are a lot simpler questions. So then they, they, they can still be part of that. And obviously the more able can can access the higher questions. And it's quite nice because sometimes the, the, the weaker pupils do um, want to get the higher marks and they really try on those sort of high, you know, harder questions and, and do succeed eventually. But again, it's really an activity where you're leaving it to, to them to, to do their own revision and to support each other. And again, it's quite inclusive in the classroom. It becomes so it gamifies. They don't realize what they're doing, you know, because they're either enjoying it. And again, the same sort of thing, this, this activity can easily last, you know, half an hour to a full lesson dependent on, um, the speed of the pupils and, and also it creates a lot of arguments a lot of the time with some of the pupils, you know, uh, so you just got to float around and, and problem solve. So question marks work really well. 
So what I'd like us to do, because I have just spoke at you for 15 minutes and it's not usually my style. So what I'm going to do before we do anything else is I want to pause just for three or four minutes uh, where me and Carol aren't going to speak. And it's over to you. Just have a think to yourself of all these activities that I've written down. And I just want you to think what out of these would you use the most in the classroom and why? So the, the, the top one would be the, the most useful thing that from this presentation you can go, I'm going to take away, you know, in September or, or even um, starting now that you're going to use and then to the least activity. So try and plot these. If you think question match, that goes in the top and so on and so forth. So I'm just going to be quiet for a minute and I'm going to give you uh, sort of four or five minutes just to digest what I've just spoke at you for. Okay. Simon, quick question. Do you pay for the exam papers? The exam papers are free. Thank you. Yeah, I don't know with other exam, I don't know with OCR um, if you have to pay for them or whatever else, but certainly they're Excel, they're all digital and at AQA I'm pretty sure are the same as well, but you can just access them through there. Uh, so Red Excel is your Red Excel online and whatever the AQA, EAQA I think it's called, you can access them through there. But if you speak to your exams officer, I'm sure they'll be able to tell you. Also, to add to that, the examiner's reports are generally free as well on, on the websites, which have example questions as well, if you can't pull your, uh, your own pupils' questions back. People aren't necessarily getting the link on the chat, so I'm dropping it into some of the questions. Um, the bit That's link's fine. got there. I'll tweet it as well now so people can get it. putting the link in the chat and Simon's also tweeting it at how to computing Just doing that now. I'm also just sorting out Simon's presentation to go in the handouts as well that's been a bit delayed but that'll be there shortly Bear with me. I'm just about to tweet this, guys, and then we'll come back to this. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so I've just tweeted that there, so that's gone. Should be able to access it. Right. Um, so, any in the questions, if we want to post, where do we think? And any questions from the presentation? What um, do you think is for you guys would be the most useful activity from this presentation where you, you would um, 
you know, use, you go away tomorrow, say, and use. Um, so if you wanted to post something in the chat, I know there's 78 of you here, so it, it might be a bit crazy, but we'll see how we get on um, and have a bit of a chat just to see why. So if you'd like to post, if you'd have that time to review. So what do you think would be your most useful um, activity and what's the least useful that you'd use? If you want to just post that in the, the chat, that would be great. Or is it the questions, Carol, sorry? Questions in it, let me pull that out. Sorry, the questions. Um, yeah, let me just go through those now. All right. Do I need to change the word? Yes. So the keyword Scrabble there, uh, you do need to train the, the um, the pupils it does take a bit of time to get used to you know initially you can let them use the books for example to support them and then again like i said you sort of then taking away that scaffolding if that makes sense so if they do struggle you can let them use the books um or revision material that they have and then eventually start to to, to take that away from them so then it supports them a little bit more questions yeah who's good yeah Flashcards, yeah, Triple Pursuit, yeah, it's quite a nice idea there. It's a good one. It's on there. Sorry, I'm just trying to, it's called flashing up very quick. Yeah, examiner's reports um, from Dave. It's really, um, really useful to get them to mark there, which is good. Yeah, knowledge organizers linking to all the material does work well. Just, and again, that, that sort of um, retrieval question does support really well, um, you know, with pupils getting them back and looking at that. Have a look on here. Ranking, sorry, people keep posting. Yeah, so knowledge organized people quite like, which is good. The quizzes, which is good. Um, so the chair. The, the Scrabble will be in the resource. So that link we sent out in a bit there's actually a editable version, I think I've PDF'd it in there, uh, Ian, so you'll be able to just download that um, that Scrabble board. So it's all ready to go. Like I said, just send it to your repo, get them to print it and laminate it for you. You also should now see on the right hand side oh, under handouts. I put the wrong bitly link in, sorry, it's my fault. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll just change that now. In My the handouts now, you'll see the. Uh, was, does this one not work? Oh yeah, it does not work. Let's try again. Um, You'll be able to access the presentation notes now. So if you want to have a look at those, they're in the handouts section. Simon, I'll sort that out if you like. Sorry, I'm just, says, um, just, I'm just redoing the bitly. It seems to have not worked. So I'm just going to. James says it's worked for him. Oh, okay. Is it the one on the Twitter one? Has it worked? Let's have a look. Right. I'll check it out in a second. That works. Yeah, it's not worked for me. It's been a bizarre one. That sorry, I will do that again. I'll post it again now for us. Yeah, good point. Um, don't watch your um, what you're pasting from the link. Don't use your crocodile clips at each end of the Bitly link. Alan's just posted that. Okay. Ah, this isn't. I'll sort the Bitly link out in a second. Somebody, James, is 
that one there. James has posted one in there if that works for him, which would be great. In the, the questions, you can copy and paste that. I will change it in a second on mine. I don't know. Oh, there's an R at the end of mine instead of a four, hence the reason why it's not worked. I will change that. Thanks, James. You can't see the chat unless you, it's only one message in there, so we've removed it. If we, if you go into the questions, the only other thing that's available to you there is the uh, handouts, which you should now see a PDF that says GCSE Computer Science Revision app. Nice short title there. Um, and that's Simon's presentation. Fantastic, Andrea's got the PDF, so we know that's working. Thanks, Andrea. Yeah, so we've got any questions. Sorry about that, guys. Usually these, uh, when I do these sessions, it's a lot more interactive, hence the reason why I want you to have a go at these activities. So it has been a bit quicker, um, and I know it's been a bit of a whirlwind, but I know um, we're all busy people at the minute. So, I mean, in terms of the, the activity, we've got any questions regarding anything that you want me to talk through? What is the name of the flashcard website? It's called CRAM. If I go back to that one here for you, uh, we'll put on there in a second. I just go back here. It's called Cram. Did it was it not on there? No, it was not. I'll post that as well. I've got a question from Chris Atkinson. How, did you send the link to the oh the ED questions? I can answer that. On the um, EDI questions, you can you need to create an account and you can go into there and create your own and edit any that are in there. That's a free resource. I think yep. that's the one you meant, uh, Chris. Yeah, the, the cram there, that's the, the website there. It's free for an account. Um, um, so sign up. I will be tweeting some of my stuff, which you can just use and reuse the link as well, which saves you a bit of bit of your time. At some point over the next couple of weeks, I am drip feeding some resources out on Twitter um, for my pupils, so feel free to use them. Question mats. Yeah, that's fine. I can go over the question mats again. Yeah, so the question mats here are basically when you've when this link works, when I send it out again in a second. Um, the question maps, what they are, I've created them for different topics, multiple ones in the same topics. So one pupil has the answers, and then probably in groups of about three to four, it works well. Anything over that becomes a little bit more harder to manage. So the person who's a quiz master has the questions, also keeps score. And the pupils pick which question they wish to answer, but they are ranked. So easy questions are red squares to blue squares, which are the harder questions. The harder questions obviously get more points. Um, whoever gets the most points by the end wins. Um, so it's quite a nice way for pupils to interact with each other and support each other. So hopefully that answers your question on the question mats again. Um, Julie? Yeah, no problem. Okay, yeah, resource. Let me try this. Um, I'm just going to tweet this resource out again um, for us, see if it works before we go. I've just put another PDF up on the handouts, which is just a um, quick word document pdf with the link in that does work i've just tested that link so you should be able to get the second pdf and it's got the bitly link in so that should work now simon cheers it's just because Love i've got technology. lots of resources on there guys usually because you can only i think upload to this system about five or six resources i think so yeah because there's so much on there it's just been a bit different today which we've had trouble with so i apologize for that um okay thank you yeah good and um, i've got any more questions because i'm you know more or less done i think with that if we've got any questions regarding which i've not answered i've missed because we have lots on there um, Julia's just 
yeah. to, to pick activities. Um, towards the end, uh, yes, certainly. Um, during when it's main content delivery, it's, it's more structured. Obviously, once we've finished for all the content delivery and we're in revision, um, yeah, there is a bit of variety there where I, I can get a bit of feedback from and they can select an activity to do, yeah. But I generally leave that until um, we've finished all delivery of content. Okay. Oh, anything for computational thinking? Um, so, computational thinking, yeah. So, if you if you look at, I've, I've started tweeting out, and obviously with the changes to um, the course, the the new spec for September, I'm doing. I always do quite a bit of uh, Python challenges. I think that's one of the best things for computational thinking. So, giving them a variety of tasks um to, to solve so you know i have different python challenges so them going from creating a program based on a brief to rearranging code to um adapting code some paired programming uh, the prim method of sort of ex you know predicting running uh, modifying code so that's how i generally teach a lot of that computational thinking is giving them an algorithm and then letting them go through it if that makes sense I think it works well. And again, if you look at my Twitter feed, I have posted some uh, Python challenges out which will support that computational thinking. Um, so do um, track their own progress using activities, do they identify their own gaps? So in terms of that identifying their own gaps, um, what I do as part of the revision process is I create as well a, a Google form which I send out to pupils and it gives me a good snapshot of just as simple as this topic here or this area you know where would you rate yourself you know one being not very confident five being very confident so then it gives me a bit of a, a heads up in terms of that where pupils are at and then we can we can um, fill the plug in the gaps where needed based on that yeah so would you recommend any good websites for pseudocode challenges um, Pseudocode wise, it's a bit of a difficult one because exam boards do different pseudocodes, you know, and um, it's really got a, you, a lot of the stuff you can find out there, you've got to adapt then directly to your exam board's pseudocode guide, if that makes sense. So it's, it's really difficult in that respect. Um, yeah, so, so I think the easy thing to do is to, I mean, we, we, deliver mainly in Python now, but because we're with Edexcel, their new um, GCSE, their whole paper two is on screen where pupils have to create a Python program in a set time. Um, so a lot of my challenges are all around um, are all around Python, you know, which can be adapted. I mean, most exam boards do accept Python code for like the the uh, long question, but obviously when they've got the shorter questions, which you'll know in the in the exam board, it's got to be specific to their pseudocode. I mean, I know Edexcel used to have a pseudocode guide. I don't know if AQA have published one of those. Oh, there you go. Um, thanks for that, um, Jenny. There, she posted something there for you, um, which is toolswithcode.uk slash pseudo war. Thanks for that resource there. So hopefully that'll that'll support you. Okay, yeah, thanks for that. Hopefully that's all right. Yeah, uh, I can't see the link. If you have a look yeah. on your on your handouts section of your um, go to webinar for the links, there is there are two handouts in there now. One is Simon's PDF of his presentation, and the other is a PDF that's just got the link on it. It's literally just a white piece of paper with the link on it, and you'll be able to access the materials there. I've also just retweeted the link which works for the um, other resources as well. I've just tested that as well. So hopefully um, you've, you've got a good bit of idea. I know I've thrown loads of ideas at you. Yeah. And I know it's been a bit tricky in this type of environment uh, to present this. Um, 
you can only see chat by partic by participants on only the question. I don't know, Carol, would you help me with that one? Yeah, well then what was it? I'm just getting that link for somebody who's just asked. Uh, sorry, what's the question? Can I cannot see the chat by participants started following no, you on Twitter. No, that's what we're we're trying to repeat it all verbally. Um, so if you, you know, we're trying to repeat what people are saying, it's all, bizarrely, it's all to do with GDPR because we can't show people's names. So any questions that you've got following what other people have put in, the one was the link from um, Jenny who were, who put down tools.withcode.uk. So that might be uh, the link that you are looking for. Okay, so thanks for that. I think, uh, yeah, if everybody's happy with that, then, you know, thanks for tuning in. I know it's been a bit of a rush for you there, but hopefully you've got some good ideas to take away. Please click the link and have a look and adapt any of the resources for your needs. Um, and hopefully you'll, you'll use some of these in your teaching. That'd be great. Yeah, just uh, a, a massive thank you. Simon, for all, I mean, all those materials that you've shared, apart from anything, the amount of time that that's going to save people, it was it was absolutely amazing. I can't even pick a highlight because I'm about to go and magpie all of them. At the end of this webinar, uh, you'll get a short survey. We really appreciate it if you just take a minute to click on that and complete it. In a few weeks' time, you will get an email with a very shiny CPD certificate in there. So we all like our certificates. Um, to show your attendance at the session. Recording will be available on the CAS website in the near future. And if you haven't already, have a look at the virtual showcase brochure, see what else takes your fancy. Um, there's going to be so much going on, there's some being added all the time as well, so keep up with that. But thank you so much for joining us, with a, an immense thanks for Simon for giving up his time as well for today's session. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, guys. Thanks for the messages on the chat. Really appreciate it. Glad you've got something from it. <laughs> Thanks, Simon. Sorry. I've got it. I've got, I shall end the meeting, but I think every, everything's in there now. Um, all this will be posted anyway up on the CAS website. That, that was fantastic. So much to share. Really appreciate that. Um, good numbers as well. Yeah. Go and put your feet up. Oh, yeah, come look after <laughs> my two year old now. She's just got up. I can hear her. That's she. All right, I'm going into another yeah. webinar. Well done. Thank you. Keep in touch if I can help you with anything. Bye.